Some of you guys are very, very observant of my tiny little coffee card. You're looking at everything that's on it and you have noticed and you keep asking, what is that hand grinder? What, what, what is this thing? And that is what I am here to talk to you about today. So this is the Helor Flux or Helor 106. And it is what I believe to be basically the best hand grinder. I would say definitely the best hand grinder for espresso. I'll go over the specs. You'll kind of see why I think it's the best because of that. And of course, I'll show you a demonstration. This, in my opinion, is the best Titan hand grinder because one, it is actually usable. Two, it's actually portable. So unlike an HD1, you can kind of bring this with you. And three, it's got really great performance. So this grinder is about $750 to $800. It is not a cheap hand grinder, but it is absolutely amazing because it uses 71 millimeter Mazur 186 bears. So in this tiny package here, you have 71 millimeter conicals big boy conicals in a grinder this big. This grinder does weigh about 1800 grams, although there is a newer iteration of this that I think weighs around 1600 grams. But the point here is that it's got big burrs. Now, here's the issue with the Pharos here. The Pharos has 68 millimeter, I think, Itamils or maybe they're Mazars, I'm not sure, but they're 68 millimeter conicals. The issue with this grinder is it is impossible to use. This is much more usable. This is geared down about three to one or four to one, depending on what iteration you have. So that means every single three turns of this equals one turn of the burr set. That actually means you can grind coffee. Pharos is not geared down at all. So that's why when you you put in your light roast coffees, you just have a terrible time because you need so much torque to actually grind the coffee, especially if you're doing something like espresso. And it's not geared down crazily like the Apex here, where you have to do 20 million turns just to have have one rotation of the burr set. And the biggest advantage of this is that it doesn't jam like an HG1 does. This thing chews through those light roast coffees. This thing is absolutely amazing for espresso. Everything you touch about this is amazing. So the actual place where you load the beans in, I think you can fit about 40-ish grams in here. The top part, your handle fits on really nicely. It's got this piece of wood here. And what's also really cool here is there's this rubber grip, so you can really grip this thing. And of course, the catch cup is magnetic. Now, let me go over performance and then also tell you about some of the downsizing and then I'll show you a demonstration of this. So performance wise, this is so amazing. I have the niche there, I have the Pharos here and I have the Flux here. All of these have very similar properties in cup because they have big conical burrs. Niche zero, 63 millimeter conicals, Pharos, 68 millimeter conicals, and flux 71 millimeter conicals. So all of those amazing properties in cup of the niche, which is high texture body, nice and chocolatey, just super approachable and comfortable cup that the niche produces, especially in espresso, they exist in the flux here. Although I'll be very straightforward here and say that if you had all three espressos pulled from each of these, you probably would be, have a pretty difficult time in telling the differences. But in my experience, I've found a little bit more clarity and definitely slightly more body because of those larger conical burrs in the flux and also the pharos compared to the niche. What is also amazing about the flux is the retention here. So you're only getting about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 grams of retention. You kind of will see in here, there's a little bit of uh, some coffee that gets retained in here, but the grounds are so easy to work with. There's no static, even out of something like the niche here, you kind of see the grounds get a little compacted together already because of the static. You don't have that problem with the flux. The usability of this grinder is, is top notch considering it's a hand grinder. Now there are only kind of two downsides with the flux. First issue is dialing in this grinder. So the way you adjust the grind size is just super annoying. Basically you have to adjust your grind size using this little small adjustment ring and it is not stepped it's a stepless grind size adjustment uh, so what happens is, is I'll show you here and I this is probably gonna throw the adjustment that I have off whack but you stick this in here and you can adjust the grind size so this allows me to freeform adjust the grind size the issue here is that this is not numbered at all so uh, you're it's really dependent on how far in you actually screw this adjustment in that basically makes dialing in terrible you have to sacrifice at least one to two shots when you're dialing in for espresso uh, but generally speaking once you get it in right it's really good another thing i did want to note on the downside of this grinder is filter performance so it's at the coarser end you get a ton of fines and your your brews just clog like crazy you can sieve it out but i do think uh cheaper grinders like the c40 easy presto hep q2 heptagonal all those guys do a little bit better when it comes to filter performance but when it comes to big conical burr for espresso 
this is it. This is the answer here. Now, the second issue of the Flux is this catch cup here. So sometimes when you grind coffee, uh, a little coffee will get stuck in the edges here in these kind of crevices of this catch cup, but you can kind of just like knock it out there. Uh, although you do want a WDT after that. Kind of that's the only issue really I would say about the Flux here is just that dialing in. The, the little catch cup issue is not really an issue because you WDT. It's hilarious that it's a hand grinder and it produces just such a comfortable espresso really high body chocolate a little bit more clear than the niche this is really perfect for those of you who are after like a very chocolatey espresso or you're using more of those medium dark roast coffee this does also work fairly well for light roast coffee same thing kind of with the niche where uh, the big conicals kind of just remove a lot of the acidity that you'll find in some of those lighter roast coffees uh, although i will say that the 71 mil mazars here are slightly clearer although you would be super hard pressed to tell the difference between the 63 68 and 71 mil conicals all right so let me show you how to to grind coffee using a flux it's super easy so all you got to do is you take the bottom part off here I use this to weigh my coffee and I'm gonna be using this elixir coffee uh, wash wash which is I would say more on like medium light lighter end of medium which is um, not gonna work at all in the ferros but I'll grind some coffee in the ferros just for fun so I always like to put in about 18.1, just a, just a little bit more, like an extra bean or two, uh, because it's going to, because these burrs do retain a bit, which is like 0.1 to 0.3 grams, although that's gonna depend on coffee. And I would make the argument that that's not really that big of an issue here, especially because there's no static at all. But yeah, you, I just put the coffee in there, and then what you do is I will do this. I'll then pour the beans into the top, very straightforward and then I love that that bottom part is magnetic so this is set up hopefully to a proper espresso grind size because I did adjust it a little to show you but look at this watch this I'm not I'm not using my body I'm not using the table I'm not using the football technique with the Pharaohs is I can just I can just grind the coffee that's amazing. This is so funny to me because these are 71 millimeter Mazars. This is a fairly light coffee and we're grinding really, really fine. Uh, this might be even too fine for the decent here. I've definitely choked my decent out using this grinder. Gearing down the grinder is completely fine because these burrs are just so, so big and they let you grind the coffee fairly fast. I'm definitely not suffering or dying when I, like when I use the Pharos. So yeah, there we go. And you know what's also awesome about this grinder is it's quiet. This is not stupidly loud like the Pharos is. I do like to give this a, a few more turns just at the end because sometimes there's a little bit of, of coffee stuck in here. And here we go. So let me show you the retention. Usually I would say you're off by like 0.1 to 0.2. So 18.3, I put in like 18.3-ish. And then you'll see there's grounds here, but what you can do is you can just give this a little tap like that and then you get your 0.1 back usually and dumping it into there you'll kind of see that there are a little bit of it becomes a little clumpy and that's just because uh the coffee gets stuck in the edges there so that's kind of the only issue i have with this uh grinder but you can just kind of do this you can really just knock this thing out and then you're good to go Okay, so I choked my decent uh, <laughs> using that and I was pulling the Cremina Lover Profile, which requires pretty fine grinding. So I'm just going to adjust here and this is a perfect example of where the flux kind of doesn't do so well is adjusting grind size. So I'm going to try to dial this in. I'm making the grind coarser, so I'm going uh, counterclockwise and I hope this is dialed in. But once you get it right, it works out pretty good, but I'm going to grind some more coffee then I'll show the Pharaohs just for fun. Put the beans in there make sure all of those beans are inside and then I go in here and let's grind the coffee again. So I made it a bit coarser. I would say about like four dots, four to six dots coarser and let's go again. So this is even easier to grind and I'm going to just kind of do this and see how fast I can grind it. Usually I like to put this against like my knee or something and you can go really fast with this uh, once you have an anchor point for your body here. but. It's nice and quiet. Like, this is so nice to be able to actually grind. So, I'm really trying to go at it. Probably don't look the best right now on camera, but 
I'm not struggling here, which is the crazy thing. Like, there's no, there's no excess amount of beans that get stuck in the burrs and you, the burrs get jammed like a Pharos or HG1. This thing just chews through those coffee beans. So here we go. I'm reaching the end already. And that took me, what, maybe 45 to a minute. I took a break in the middle, but this is mostly done now. Like, that is, that is quite amazing considering this is a hand grinder. Okay, here we go. So, got all the beans out. 18.1, there's probably a little bit of exchange from before. A little bit of grounds in here. Doesn't really make a difference. You can definitely just knock those out in there. Let me try again to pull a shot that hopefully won't choke my machine. Sometimes you can get pretty lucky with the coffee that you put in there. So I just kind of tossed it in there, yeeted it into there and no grounds got stuck inside, which is awesome. However, because there were coffee grounds on the edges, on the inside of there, it does create those small little clumps uh, there, but you know, you can just WDT them out. And these grounds are really nice to WDT because there aren't like 5 million clumps in here that other grinders may produce, especially at the finer end. So really easy to WDT. And I would say even these bigger conical burrs, you can, they're still pretty forgiving uh, to your puck prep. So you can definitely just not be too crazy about your puck prep and always get something that is pretty good. All right, looks decent enough to me. Give this a tamp and why not puck screen it? All right, attempt number two, but this is the reality of using a flux is uh, you're gonna need to try multiple times before you get it right. There we go. This is looking a lot better. Now the pressure is gonna ramp up because this is the Cremina profile. Nice. I'm only pulling to 36 grams. All right, let me bring you guys in. Look at this espresso. This is what's really nice about like grinders like the Niche, the Pharos, and the Flux is you just get really nice texture in your shots. Um, of course, this is gonna depend on what coffee you use. And this is a shot that's most likely gonna veer towards more chocolatiness, but it's gonna have really big body because it is a big conical burr grinder. All right, so I pulled myself that nice shot from the flex here. Big body, big conical, very typical stuff here. It's a very comforting taste. You definitely get a lot of texture on your tongue, although this does, of course, taste more like chocolate. Definitely not that high clarity that I would personally prefer for a coffee like this Elixir Wush Wush, but Honestly, for most people, this is going to be really good. For fun, let me show you the Pharos. In that original video, I actually shot that video many months ago. It was, I was using Blue Bottle Haze Valley, which is a charcoal compared to the Elixir coffee here. I'm gonna put in five grams of coffee. I, I, I think five might be pushing it. I, I, don't think, I don't think I'm strong enough to do more than five, at least with this. I did make this grinder a little bit finer, but I, I didn't put this in around pour over range, but actually, you know what? Let's let's try let's try going for our espresso setting that on the Pharaohs here, and and let's see what happens. Doing this for fun. Don't try this at home, kids. You might break your arms. You might break yourself. So I'm putting in my five grams of coffee. Gonna do the uh, dosing ring method, and um, just because showing off the Pharaohs is really fun for me. I'm gonna take that little popcorning ring off here. Knock all the beans. All right, so I'm taking the little popcorn thing and I'm knocking all those beans inside of here. And it's quite amazing to see how technology... Yeah, so I just popcorned those beans uh, over there. Okay, hold on, let me, let me pick those up. So as I was saying, it is quite amazing how technology has advanced in the world of uh, Titan hand grinders in this becoming the Flux. Uh, and I do really think if it wasn't for Orphan Espresso, we would not have grinders like the Flux that exist. Um, we needed to have people providing you crazy high-end burrs in very affordable packages. And that's really what the Pharos is. So let's see 
I don't know. I'm not feeling that confident, especially because I got to hold it up for the camera. But uh, let's try it. Okay, that's not good. Off to a good start. Here we go. So, all right. You can you can definitely see that this is very difficult to do with one hand here. So yeah, that's five grams there, uh, but you can kind of see that they get stuck in there. And this just does not happen on the flux at all. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but you'll definitely be able to hear it, is hear how loud this grinder is compared to the flux here. And I'm really struggling. So I don't even think this grind setting is correct, or it's there's no way this is gonna be as fine as the flux here. Um, but here we go. So there we go, that's my, that's my five grams. I am struggling. I look amazing on the camera, right? Let me take the bottom cork part out. So that's the other innovation that we've come in the Titan hand grinder world is we've decided to allow you to grind into a catch cup uh, that disassembles from the grinder instead of doing something like this. So I'm just gonna dump this out into my hands. That did not come out. There we go. And you don't have to knock the grinder to get the coffee like that because this is definitely an espresso grind size but like this is four or five grams this is a lot of effort you're really hearing that maybe i'm potentially out of shape here um but to do an equivalent grind size the pharos requires a lot more effort even though the burrs are smaller than the flux uh, and that's just simply put because you don't have the gearing down that the flux has you can see it's the same exact coffee and i struggled a lot just to do four or five grams um because i don't have a pharos that is bolted to the table or motorized or anything like that to do the exact same grind size it's so much less effort on the flux definitely worked out a, worked up a sweat using the pharos uh here but that's the thing is that it's quite interesting to look at innovation in titan hand grinders or really like hand grinders in general because this came out 10 years ago and this is currently the i would say the more modern iteration of the titan hand grinder concept a lot of people look at the pharos and they're like this is a piece of garbage this thing doesn't work well it's why would you anybody deal with something like this back then to get the same burrs, these 68 mil conicals, you had to buy something like the compact, I think K10, which was two, three thousand uh, dollars compared to this thing, which was only a few hundred dollars. And you could get the equivalent coffee out of both of those grinders. So really back then, this was the value pick, although RSI is not the most fun thing to deal with. So I think having big burrs, especially in a grinder like this is, is hilarious. It's definitely not a meme like the Ferris is. The Ferris is definitely a meme grinder. That's why I have one. Uh, but the thing is, is like, this is so much more usable. You're getting basically similar cups between this and the Pharos and the Niche, although this is just infinitely more usable because you can actually grind the coffee and there is a catch cup. It chews through those light roast coffees. You're not struggling. You don't have to bolt the grinder down. You don't have to motorize it at all to actually use it. I do want to talk about this though. Some guy, I think in China, has created a modification for this. So you can actually modify it using 3D printed parts. I reached out to him, he hasn't responded to me yet, but you can modify the flux here to stick in 83 millimeter intimal burrs. That is hilarious. Now you might be wondering, who is this for? Because this is really expensive, 750, 800 bucks. Why not just buy a niche? Well, it might depend on where you live in the world. Helor grinders might actually be cheaper in certain parts of the world compared to the niche and you're getting very similar performance with this and the niche, although the niche is so much easier to dial in, but this is a grinder that you can bring around, you don't need electricity, and I've actually brought this grinder with me with my Europicola on a work trip. Like, I brought those two with me, I had my lovely chocolatey espressos with my Europicola, and all of this fit in my suitcase. I can't really fit a niche and a Europicola that easily, and this thing will just fit in like a backpack. It's super, super easy to bring around. The only downsides with this thing are dialing in. Dialing in this thing is not the easiest thing in the world. It's You, you definitely have to waste coffee to dial it in. And I also would com make some complaints about this catch cup here, where this catch cup just creates clumps and getting the coffee out of here is not the easiest task every single time but once you figure out the workflow it's very usable this is a grinder that is probably the highest performing portable hand grinder that exists right now uh it is expensive but that's it's it's built like a tank it feels great to use and you know what it's actually usable it chews through those light roast coffees it doesn't jam 
and it produces a very, very amazing espresso. So that's all I wanted to show off today. That is the Helor Flux or Helor 106. This was, this is just a really fun grinder to use. It is hilarious to me that you can fit 71 mil conicals in a grinder this big and it's actually usable. It's not something like the Pharos, which makes you want to end your life and you don't have to spin it 5 million times like the Apex to actually grind your coffee. Real quick before we end the video, I do want to note that this grinder was sent to me by my friend and and if you do want to send anything in, my email is down there. You can reach out to me. I will make a video about whatever you send me. It's just really fun. I love this grinder. It is, it was awesome. It's awesome. Uh, but thank you for spending the time to watch the video. I will see you around.